Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I put together a quick update regarding the Blue Keep RDP vulnerability, that's CBE 2019 and they're really sort of two points I wanted to make in this blog post. First of all, uh, don't put too much trust into the IDS signatures that have been published so far. RDP is usually used over TLS and the part of the exploit that these signatures look for is typically encrypted. So the signatures will probably not detect any exploit attempts. Also all the current proof of concept and scanner exploits out there, they all take advantage of TLS. Actually turns out at least in Windows 7, I played with this uh, quite a bit today, it's pretty hard to turn off a TLS. So you should assume that all RDP connections in your network are using TLS. The second part that hasn't been mentioned often is network level authentication. That's an authentication option that you have with RDP. It's sort of suggested when you are setting it up in Windows 7 and later, but has some problems. It, uh, for example, doesn't allow you to change your password if you have to change the password as you're logging in, then you kind of have this catch 22 there. Also in Windows XP, and I hope you don't have Windows XP RDP exposed anymore, it may be more difficult to set it up. But the big difference with network level authentication is that the authentication happens before the protocol details are negotiated. So this way the exploit will no longer work unless the attacker has a valid username and password. Aside from this, I'm linking uh, to some PCAPs in the blog post uh, of either normal RDP traffic. I also collected some that's uh, not encrypted, just more or less as a reference. And also then ex uh, PCAP traces from uh, some of the exploits or proof of concept exploits and scanners that have been released so far. So you kind of get an impression of what the traffic looks like. But again, that's just TLS. So really not much to see here. Still no public working remote code execution exploit for this vulnerability. So you probably should have at least till this weekend, I think at this point uh, before any kind of widespread exploitation is expected. But remember, at least in the US, this will be a long weekend for most of us with Monday being a holiday. But for the Windows folks out here, Blue Keep is actually not the only thing you have to worry about. Yesterday and today, Sandbox Escaper released another three zero days. These three exploits are targeting three so far unpatched vulnerabilities. Now, the good news here is that these are no sort of simple remote code execution vulnerabilities. Just like prior vulnerabilities that Sandbox Escaper has published, these are either approach escalation vulnerabilities, and in one case, sort of a code execution in Internet Explorer, but really more code that helps you exploit other vulnerabilities than sort of a full-fledged remote code execution vulnerability in itself. One of the vulnerabilities does again take advantage of the task scheduler, just like a prior vulnerability released by Sandbox Escaper, and actually looks sort of a little variety of the earlier vulnerability, which is why it's also named similarly. And according to researchers from the Chronicle, it turns out that uh, cryptographically signed malware is becoming more and more common. Now, similar to what we have seen with Let's Encrypt, as certificates became cheaper and easier to obtain, we saw more phishing sites uh, that used TLS. 
In this case also because certificate authorities make it easier and easier and cheaper for developers to obtain code signing certificates, we see them more often used in malware. It's a bit different to what we have seen sort of a couple years ago where signed malware often used stolen certificates. And that malware was usually more associated with more sophisticated attackers. In this case, it's not a stolen certificate. It's essentially just a certificate that a malware author did purchase from a legitimate certificate authority. Komodo turns out to be one of the top certificate authorities being used here. But then again, Komodo is also one of the more popular certificate authorities since they have a lot of code signing certificates certificates that they are selling to essentially resellers. So uh, they usually tend to be one of the cheaper offerings around there. Well, and that's it for today. As a reminder on June 4th, that's a Tuesday in a week, I believe uh, we do have a special webcast about the future of authentication, really where everything is going sort of after two-factor authentication. So we won't necessarily talk about two-factor authentication too much, but really sort of some of the new technologies that sort of try to replace two-factor. That's June 4th at 10.30. Eastern. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.